And if you want to edit it, then you have to open this inspector right here, inspector gadget. <sighs> wow. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk about Final Cut Pro. I made the switch from iMovie to Final Cut a couple months ago because Final Cut does have a 90 day free trial, which is awesome. And I kind of assumed it would be fairly easy to figure out since iMovie is pretty user friendly. I was wrong. <laughs> it took me a long time to figure out how to use Final Cut Pro even in the most basic way. But now that I figured it out, I wanted to make a video and share some of those things with you. If you're not there yet, if you're not ready for Final Cut, I did make a video on how to use iMovie, which I will link right up here and in the description box below. But if you did make the switch or are thinking about it, then this video is for you. I will leave a list in the description box of the topics I'll be covering today since there are a lot of things I wanna talk about. And I will leave their timestamps as well if you wanna skip around to anything. Um, I'm gonna be editing on my MacBook Pro. So I'll be including screen recordings so that you can follow along with everything that I'm doing. But let's just go ahead and get started. The first thing I wanna talk about is editing on an external hard drive. And if you don't have an external hard drive, I would highly, highly recommend getting one to keep your files on here instead of on your computer because your computer will fill up quickly with large video files. And this is gonna help it just run so much smoother and faster and running faster for longer, I guess. This is definitely game changing. I didn't know that you could edit your videos with your library on here instead of on your computer. And it's the library that takes up the most space on your computer. So I'm actually gonna show you how to do that. So I have Final Cut open right now. And I'm just gonna go to File, New Library. And as you can see here, my Seagate backup, that's my external hard drive. I can make new library called Editing Video and save it to my external hard drive. And now whenever I import media from my memory card, it's gonna go onto my external hard drive instead of onto my computer. So now once you have a new library, you're gonna click new event. And again, we'll just call it editing video and make sure this box right here is checked, this create new project box, click that, cause that'll also create a new project within your event. So click OK, and it'll create a new project. And you can title it whatever you want. And now your library is on your external hard drive and you're ready to start editing. Now, obviously you need to import your media files. So you're gonna do that with this little arrow right here. We're gonna go into my external hard drive and I am going to import these files from the most recent video that I posted. And now they're up here on our sidebar. And what you can do is just drag them all into your project, but I would actually recommend doing something else before you do that. You have all your files up here, and what you can do is actually kind of like skim through them like this. And for example, I wanna cut, I don't wanna drag all this me twirling my hair into my project when I'm just gonna cut it out. So what I'm gonna do instead is click I for in, which is where you want your clip to start, and then kinda just scroll through and I want it to stop right there, so we're gonna click O. So now I can drag just that clip, and it's gonna save me a lot of time from splitting and deleting and taking out all of this stuff right here. That's completely unnecessary. You can also click the space bar to play your clips. And if you click L, it will speed them up. So you can actually watch them kind of like in speedy motion to save you some time with your editing. And you can click L again and it'll speed it up even more. And then if you just click the space bar, it'll pause it. And then if you click space again, it'll be in normal speed. And you can also do that when you're watching your final edit all the way through. 
you can watch it in fast motion with L, so you can watch quickly through your video to save you some time. Another thing you can do in your little taskbar up on the left right here is click this and check waveforms. So it'll show you kind of like where you're not talking versus where you are talking. Obviously the waveforms that are higher up are me actually speaking. And that can help you decide where you want your clip to come in. So again, I'm gonna click I. And looks like I'm still talking all the way through here. So let's drag that into the project now. Another thing that can be kind of annoying while you're editing is if you're kind of like scrolling through, you can hear that I sound like a sim. So that's pretty annoying. You can actually turn that feature off by clicking this right here. This turns off audio skimming. So now when I skim through my clips, there's no mumbo jumbo happening. Now let's talk about splitting clips. Splitting clips is the same as it was on iMovie. If you just click Command B, it will split the clip and you can delete those breaks in where you're talking. So obviously there is a pretty large break here where I'm thinking really hard about what I wanna say. And then I keep talking. So we can just split that and then delete it. And there's another one right here. Command B, Command B, and we can get rid of that. Another thing that might happen to you, which has happened to me, if you accidentally click just B instead of Command B, you're gonna get this little tool, and you might be like, oh my God, how do I get back to just the select tool? This is where all the tools are right here. So if you just click on select, you'll be able to select clips again, <laughs> which um, that took me longer than I care to admit to figure out. But again, as you can see, you can also just click the letter A to get back to select. Or you can go to your little toolbar here. Another important thing that you'll need to know how to do is zooming in and out on your project. And you can do that by either zooming in or out on your keypad, on your trackpad, or you can do command plus to zoom in and command minus to zoom out. So now that we kind of have the basics going, I wanna talk about you know transitions, effects, the thing that really make your video personal to you. So what you wanna do if you wanna make an effect is highlight the clip in question and make sure that this like scroll bar is over the highlighted clip. And then you're gonna click this box right here with these two squares. And here are all of your effects, video and audio. So we can do, let's look, let's do fisheye. Why not? And then you can use this circle to change where you want your fisheye to be. And then in this section right here, you have the ability to kind of adjust the level of effects that you want to do. So you can make it more fisheye or less. And you can do the same thing for like a color effect too. If you want to do like a faded color, you just do the amount. You just drag the amount bar less and it'll do less of an effect. And if you decide, oh, I don't want fisheye anymore, you can either uncheck the box or if you have this selected, you can do edit, remove effects and it will remove whatever effect you put on it if you decide later that you don't like it. So obviously this is also where you do audio effects. So if you wanted to do like a pitch change, you can drag pitch onto it for comedic effect if you wanna make your voice higher or lower. And then if you wanna change audio effects, like the level, you are gonna to wanna to click this audio inspector. And if you scroll down, here's where you can change the pitch. So obviously this is gonna make the pitch higher. This can work for any holiday you celebrate and this will make it lower. So let's just go ahead and get into it. Really cute, I know. And again, if you don't wanna do that, you just unclick pitch or you can edit, remove effect. You can also save effects presets. So if you have the same intro for your video where you do like a cool zoom in or something like that, you can actually save the preset. So every time it's exactly the same and you can name it whatever you want you can even do a new category called presets and keep those in your Final Cut Pro and then use them every single time you wanna use that specific effect. Another thing you can do to kind of mimic effects are to transform your clip. 
And the way you do that is in this section right here, obviously you can see the transform. So you can rotate your clip. You can scale, which makes it bigger or smaller. You can move it over. You can move it up. And if you wanna reset it, again, you can just uncheck that. Or if you click this button right here, this little arrow, it will reset everything. Also, if you wanna make this sidebar go away for a little bit, you can actually just click this button right here and it'll give you more room. Like if you're just watching your clips back and you don't want that in the way, you can select that and then check it again if you want that to come back. And then the same thing here, if you wanna get rid of the effects bar, can click that and it'll go away. Now let's talk about another fun thing you can do, which are transitions. Put your cursor between two clips. So I'm gonna put them between these two clips right here and I click Command T. It's gonna create a transition. And as you can see, the default is kind of this just like fade to the next frame. But this is the transitions area, this little bow tie right here. And here are all the transitions that you can choose from. There are so many. So let's do, let's do earthquake. Why not? So now if you want to test how, how that looks, you can play by clicking the space bar and the earthquake will bring you into the next frame and you can make your transition slower by dragging it out or faster by making it smaller. Oh, this is going to, this might happen to you. Sometimes it's happened to me before. If you accidentally open your precision editor, if you just click escape, it will close it. That drove me so crazy, you have no idea. And then we can just delete it if we decide we don't want it. Now let's talk about if you wanna do like a little zoom in for effect. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna split the clip here and we're gonna use this clip and do a nice zoom in. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is make sure it's selected and then we're gonna click this right here crop and you can crop it if you just want to do like a typical zoom in or if you want to do a slow zoom which is a Ken Burns you can do that here and if you want to get rid of that Ken Burns you can just go to edit remove effects and it'll be back to normal. Another thing you can do is picture in picture. So if you wanna put like a graphic on the screen and have yourself in the corner or something like that, kind of how I've been doing this video where I've been in the lower left-hand corner and my screen sharing has been bigger. You can do that by dragging a clip on top of another clip. And if it's selected, you can click transform. And if you go and make it smaller, you can have two clips in one. And the clip that you want to be on top has to physically be on top in your project editor right here. So if you decided you wanted this clip on top, you'd have to move it physically on top. Another thing that's happened to me a couple of times is my workspace has changed and I don't know how I've changed it, but if you go to window, show and workspace, it'll show you all the things that are currently open. So currently we have transitions open. We can close that because we don't need that. We have the sidebar open. Some, somehow, sometimes that's gone away from me. So if that happens to you, you just go to window, show and workspace, you can click your sidebar and it'll pop up anything that is checked is gonna be currently open. So that's how you can close things out or get things back if they mysteriously disappear. Another thing you might wanna do is add text to your video. And you can do that by going to wherever you want the text. So if I want it right here, I, I'm just gonna click that section and do Control T, not Command T, that's for transitions. Control T is for text. And if you highlight the text, you can drag it around. And if you want to edit it, then you have to open this inspector. And to edit it, you click this button right here. 
And here are all the things you can do with your text. So there are 2D styles, 3D styles. You can change it to whatever you want. You can click and drag, move it over. You can change the size. Tracking is the space between each letter. You can change the color, which is the face. And if you click show, that's how you can change the color. You can change the outline. You can give it an outline. And again, if you click show, you can change the color of the outline. You can change the width of the outline, make it really fat or really skinny. So there's a lot of things you can do with text. And if you decide you don't want it, you can just delete it. Okay, now let's talk about speeding up or slowing down a clip. So if you want to slow something down for dramatic effect, just speed it up because you're just doing something that isn't super important, but you want people to see it. If you select the clip that you want and click on modify, you'll go to retime and you can either choose slow, fast, or custom speed. And that's how you change it to be either in slow-mo or fast-mo. All right, now I wanna talk about one more thing before I go over how you can properly export your file and that's color correction. Another thing that took me so long to figure out. So if you go to this little triangle here, that's color correction. Wow, I know, right? So color board is gonna be where you change your like color, saturation, or exposure. Exposure will make your clips brighter. This is master, this is shadows, this is midtones, and this is highlights. And so now if I uncheck this, you can see what the before looked like and what the after looks like. And that's just with color board. If you go to color wheels, I don't, I don't ever mess with these, ever. But the temperature is something I do mess with if I think that my video is too warm toned or too cool toned. You can change the temperature to make it more cool toned or more warm toned, depending on what kind of situation you have with your natural lighting or your lighting setup in your filming area. And then this is a hot tip. If you are happy with your color correction, if you copy with Command C, select a clip and go to Edit, Paste, attributes, you can paste the effects that you did with another clip onto that clip. So that way you can make sure your color correction is the same all across the board. Or for example, if you really liked the way that one of your clips was cropped, you can copy that, paste that effect, and that way you don't have to guess, oh, is this the same amount of crop as the last clip or is it different? That way you can make sure it's uniform across the board. Also, if you wanna change the volume, you can do it by just adjusting up or down. So I don't want this clip to have any volume and maybe I wanna raise the volume on this one. You can also do that by clicking, selecting the clip and holding down control and then doing plus or minus. So let's see where it's at right now, it's at 12. If I do control minus, as you can see the waveform's going down. Now it's at negative seven, or we can do up. And that way you can adjust exactly what volume level you want your clips to be at. Okay, so now if your masterpiece is complete, you obviously want to export it so that you can share it with the world. And you can do that by going up here and clicking master file. I always go to the settings to just make sure the settings are what I'm happy with. So I like better quality and I like the highest resolution. And then if I click next, it will ask me where I wanna save it to. I wanna save it to my external hard drive, of course. And then we just click save. So that is it for today. If you stuck it out till the end, thank you so, so much. I really, really hope this helps you with editing your videos on Final Cut. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate the support and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.